Good evening, YouTube, and welcome to another Gentleman's Corner. And tonight I have uh, Mr. Split Second Shooter, or Split Sec Shooter, I should say. How are you doing tonight? Uh, not too bad, how are you? Pretty good. So, um, I'll kind of just jump right into it. And I ask one question of everybody who does that, who, or who does this with me is, who or what inspired you to YouTube and why? Wow. I don't know, man. Like, I started gaming, and then I saw all these people like doing amazing things and getting sponsorships, and I, I was like, "That's really cool." Because you know, I use gaming to escape and, and do, that. and if I could make make something out of that and grow, and have people see me as you know their escape, maybe if they're not super into gaming but they don't mind watching it or something like that, I wanted people to have somewhere to vent to, almost like you know an after school. Like <laughs> meeting, I guess, at the boys and girls club or something. You know, sure. I just I always wanted to be approachable by people, and I felt that that was a great outlet to do so. It was through YouTube because it can reach a lot more people than just you know Facebook or something. You know, it's a lot easier for stuff to get shared through YouTube and stuff like that. Right. Were, were there any particular YouTubers that that you that you saw content for, and then you were like, "Hey, I, I can do that," or was it just a, a, a social? Absolutely not. <laughs> so it was just a social. I never so social... watched YouTube. I never watched YouTube prior to me actually like trying to start it really? you know i got into the gaming and then I, I ended up speaking with condemn customs who is you know my first and you know best biggest only sponsor right now but okay. I, I was speaking with him and i ended up winning one of his contests and i got a capture device which was the roxio 480 it wasn't the best but i mean it, it did its job and it was a great way to get started that's good um in terms of the videos that you put up most of it's sniping stuff although you have vlogs that you put up and other funny things that you do like when you threw your <laughs> keys into the snow how, how long did it take you to find your keys when you threw your keys into snow that was a premeditated kind of thing I, it was a fresh snow <laughs> so so you can see where uh, it went pretty much i mean they did some tumbling underneath and i ended up finding them i actually haven't tested my key fob since so i don't even know if that took up <laughs> water and still works <laughs> That was uh, that was a little crazy. Even premeditated, you never know what can happen. Yeah, I mean, a squirrel could have took off with the motherfuckers. I mean, you, just, <laughs> you never know. Right. So, um, in terms of sniping, so I I've watched some of your your videos and I've, I've seen, you know, you're, you're sniping everything like that. And me and you and Biblical Reaper, we've kind of gone back and forth about quick scoping and the skill or the not the skill. What what do you think is your what's the best way of describing what you feel sniping is in terms of Call of Duty? A challenge one word challenge uh, I got bored with regular guns I mean any like you know real sniper not not these chumps that are around just messing everything up and screwing the game up for everybody that's that's not a sniper in my opinion like I, I still I want people to play the objective like I don't promote you know avoiding tags unless you're already winning by like 50 right. I mean do what you do but you know I just I kind of lost track where I was going with that well, no. <laughs> so but but you, you're you're playing the sniper as in the sniper role, but an aggressive sniper. Right. I'm, I'm always pushing. I, I will charge like it's an SMG for days. Sure. Do you, do you feel that it's unfair because of the, the, the hit power versus some of the other guns? Absolutely not. Mostly because I use bolt action. Right. And so I have one try most of the time, unless the other person is just completely oblivious or set their controller down or, you know, just picked up the game. Chances are I have one try. If I miss or get a hit marker, I'm gonna die. Right. So I mean, you definitely have to make that first shot count. So, when I first started playing Call of Duty, it was during World of War, and you know everything, all the all of the sniper rifles were were just the rifles or bolt action rifles. I don't know if you played back then, did you? Yeah, I've I've picked that up and played on that. Uh, okay. Not my favorite Call of Duty, but <laughs> did did you did you play it when it was the current COD, or did you go back and pick it up? No, I went back and picked it up, and it was just a hacker mess. So th that's why I was never able to fully enjoy that game. Uh, what what Call of Duty did you start playing in? I didn't I didn't start playing Call of Duty Black Ops One. Like okay. I went back and played other CODs, but I'd never even heard of Call of Duty, honestly. And that's that's a t tough Call of Duty to snipe on. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually playing that like the last few days. I went back to it just because I'm so bored with Ghost. Mm -hmm. It's the maps and the way people currently play it. I'm I went back to Black Ops One and I've I've been you know having some fun on it, man. I really love. All the L sniper rifles, whether it be the 9.6A1 or the 115 or the 118 or whatever, those those are probably my favorites. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, so in terms of in terms of the, because you, you just brought this up, how the people play. 
I feel like there is a difference in terms of how people play in Call of Duty Ghosts versus the previous Call of Duties. Do you think it's the developer's fault in terms of how they designed the game and the perks and attachments and, and equipment and everything? Do you think it's the player's fault just because of the way that the environment is set up or do you think it's a combination? I definitely think it's a combination, but I think it's more leaning towards the players because they choose to play like an asshole. I mean, that's what it boils down to. you got these people that will run Danger Close with two IEDs, you know, talking current COD. Right. And I'd hide in a building with, you know, the bug uh, or something like that. I mean, whatever it is. And they'll just wait. And they're not doing that. Like, I, I don't think they're doing that because it's fun. They're doing it to get a reaction out of people, whether they make trolling videos or anything like that. I, but that's probably why they play the game. And I think they're playing it for the wrong reasons. Okay. I, mean, I play the game for it to be a first person shooter. So. Sure. Sure. Do you, I, I've asked this of other people. Do you think trolling videos are ruining Call of Duty? I think some of them are funny, but I don't know. I can't think of any that come to mind right now that are funny, but some of them definitely take it too far, and then other people try to mimic it, and then, you know, I mean, it, it spreads kind of like a disease, I guess. Right. Well, I, the, the reason why I ask that is it seems like the channels that are doing the best on YouTube, it seems like they, they are in this, like, negative atmosphere, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, like everybody's just always trying to point out flaws in it instead of, you know, hey, this is a fun way to do something, you know? Right, right. Is Do you think that the people who are doing this, do you think they're doing it just to be able to... Or do you think they're really just dicks or that they, that they want to do this to try and get attention to their channel? Because that's what sells right now, so to speak. I think they're just doing it for the attention, honestly. For the attention for their channel or for just the attention, period? Attention, period. I have a feeling that they were the class clown, if you will. I mean, anything to just create, they just crave attention. Oh, that's, that's a lot of class clowns. Um, <laughs> so you Well, have... some people aren't as open in public. You know that's, true. I mean? so yeah, that's true. That's true. And then that, that number can grow online because, you know, people grow a set. <laughs> sure. Now, you, will, you have what I would like to call a luxurious beard. <laughs> Thank you. How, uh, what, what would you say are the top three tips for growing a luxurious and full beard for people? Red meat, raw eggs, and apparently yelling at Call of Duty helps because I do that a lot. Raw eggs? Do, like, do you rub it into it, or did you do? You no, drink I, it? I totally make those other ones up. I was just, <laughs> 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 I, I don't do anything. I just do man stuff, like chop wood. Chop wood. Well, there, there's not too much wood to chop right where I'm at. Um, well, and sometimes I, you have to buy your your own wood, you know, and then just chop it some more. I guess that would work. Do you? Um, uh, I. I I've watched quite a few of your videos for, for quite some time now. I, I, we originally met through Justice, which I know you're not a part of it, although Justice is such a great community of people. I know the reason why you left because of your vlog, um, because sometimes there is something about creating your personal brand instead of losing it in, in, in a group of things. Um, but where was I going with this? <laughs> oh, um, in that, do you, do you still feel comfortable with talking with all the people from Justice? No, totally. I've still been talking to people today. Even after I quit, I was in Reaper stream last night, and everybody was saying, "Hey, splits to me." I could hear them through the headset because Reaper said in there. You know, I have a lot of love for everybody in Justice. It's just it was where I felt like I needed to be anymore. Sure, sure. Um, now I've also watched some of your older videos, and I see that you have like, you know, you do those tattoos videos talking about some of your tattoos. How many tattoos do you have now? I honestly can't answer that question. <laughs> like too many I, I to have count. No you idea. Mean? Yeah. Do they like, have they started melt like I have a friend who started with like uh, a partial sleeve and then a half sleeve and then a full sleeve and then he's redid did stuff so that it all kind of melts together. He doesn't know how many is there. Is that yeah. is that kind of the thing with you? That's pretty much what it is. I, I look at myself as like a patch quilt because everything started as a little piece here and there. Like I didn't get too many like big pieces that covered a lot of area. Right. So I had to start like theming stuff. Because I started getting small things here and there, and I'm like, well, that looks spotty. I need to add this here, but it's got to not look stupid, and it needs to make sense, and, you know, obviously have meaning for me to want to tattoo it on my body. <laughs> sure. Now, I, I grew up appreciating the alternate arts, I guess you can say. Like, I, I grew up in kind of a bad part of the city. We didn't have a lot of money, so I, I learned things like graffiti, and I also grew up with a lot of people who had tattoos and stuff like that. But it seems like there's not as much of a negative stigma to that. However, there still is some. Do you, do you ever see or get any type of flack from people about your tattoos? Oh, uh, that's totally your location. Like, I live in a small, like, in 
very small town. <laughs> it's, it seems pretty churchy. Like, I don't have a problem with, you know, people that have, you know, different religions or anything like that. That's your own thing. Just don't shove it down my throat. Right. But, uh, I always get looked at just going to the gas station. It is what it is. With the, the piercings, the tattoos, everything like that? Oh, yeah. Uh, people are, you know, pulling their kids away from me and stuff like that. Like, even my daughter's dance class, which is just the next town over she does ballet and th they kind of steer clear of me as we watch them dance do you do you how long have you had tattoos for like visibly externally visibly tattoos well even my first tattoo like i wasn't the kind of person who was like, well, i'm going to get my first tattoo and i'm going to put it under you know up on my upper arm so it's always hidden under a sleeve if i need to hide it right i got my first one on my forearm so i mean as soon as i turned 18 and got my first tattoo they were out all right. Uh, do, you, do you think even in the amount of time since you've got the first one that some people's attitudes have changed? Uh, I'm generationing, so I mean, it just depends on where you are. If you're in an area with, you know, a younger mindset, I guess it, it's way more accepted. And even more so in the next, you know, five years down that generation. Right. The older generations just don't seem to understand what it's about. Sure. You and, and you know what's funny about that is you you see a lot of people who are like World War II vets and shit like that and they all have tattoos and, and like and other people they'll have like a marine yeah one on the the top form or something yeah yeah but then they still look down on me like it's different right that, that that's what's frustrating me sure all right well I, I want to thank you for your time um, for anybody who's out there I'll put a link in uh, the description to Split's uh, Twitter account and also to his YouTube channel check him out if you don't know who he is go ahead and check out his videos and subscribe he's a great guy and uh, he's a funny dude and uh, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to have him on the gentleman's corner and uh, thank you for spending some time with me I'm totally stoked that you had me on man thanks for your time not a problem have a great night you too bye